Government shutdown! You dig? Government shutdowns are a complete halt to governmental facilities and agencies as a response to a dispute between the executive and legislative branches. These disputes usually relate to either budgetary issues between the president and Congress or policy between the two parties. For our essential question, we decided to ask the following. Is shutting down the government an efficient and ethical way for the president to assert public policy? And does party affiliation affect opinions on the topic? Let's find out. In the normal federal budget process, federal agencies submit their budget requests to the Office of Management and Budget, which prepares the budget for the president after several revisions. The president then makes his budget priorities for the State of the Union Address and submits his budget to Congress. Then, within the Senate and House of Representatives and many committees, Congress prepares a budget resolution to guide spending for appropriation bills and specific funds for each agency in the discretionary budget. The finalized bills go to the president for approval. This is where government shutdowns come into effect. If the president vetoes the budget, the whole process starts over again. And if the budget doesn't meet the deadline, Congress can do one of two things. It can pass a continuing resolution to keep federal agencies running at their current levels or to allow a government shutdown. Divided government plays a big part in the commencement of government shutdowns. If the priorities of each party for discretionary spending are different, making policy is difficult for Congress and the President due to a lack of agreement on the allocations of funding for programs such as welfare and abortions. If Congress and the President are differing parties, pushing a bill through the President can have many complications due to a differing point of view on certain public policies. For example, Donald Trump wanted the addition of money for his border wall on the budget plan, but a Democratic Congress declined to accept or Barack Obama declining to sign a Republican Congress's budget proposal without money for his Affordable Care Act. Both these situations arose from a divided government trying to push different policies and both escalated to a shutdown of the government lasting 15 or more days. The shutdown of the government creates a platform for various ethics debates. There are generally two viewpoints that will vary based on an individual's party affiliation, the party in control of Congress and the president, and the reasons for the shutdown. The first view is that the long-term goals of the shutdown are worth the short-term negative effects, and the other view is that long-term goals are not worth the short-term negative effects. These ethical questions can be applied to the most recent shutdown and the various viewpoints related to it. Term outcomes and decisions from a government shutdown overshadow the short-term negative effects? No. No. Uh, you know, I'm really not sure. Uh, I think the short-term effects are uh, what do you hear about the most or what affects people. Um, if they have a shutdown like that, I think government should, none of the government should get paid. Depends how long the shutdown's for, but somewhat. If it's a quick shutdown, then yes, but if it's a long one, possibly not. Got it. Those who do not feel immigration policy is an important matter would agree that the months spent during the shutdown in order to secure money for the border wall is not worth millions of workers working without pay and facilities shutting down. But the other viewpoint is that the border wall is a necessity to America and that the shutdown of the government to gain this money is backed by a reason. Long-term effects of a shutdown can be the implementation of new policies, such as Obama's Affordable Care Act or possibly Trump's border wall. The short-term effects include the closing of national parks, slowing of government transportation, and the lack of pay for millions of Americans. Is it unfair for certain government officials and military veterans to live without pay? Yes. Sure, I, I, everybody deserves a paycheck, especially, especially you know, veterans. I mean, these guys, these guys gave their life, you know, their, their family is about them, so they, they deserve pay more than anybody, I think. It's unfair. Unfair. It's unfair. Yeah. Based on our data, the question of whether it is fair for workers to go without pay during shutdowns is asked to both Republicans and Democrats. Both parties will agree that it is unfair for workers to go without pay. However, once the specific views of shutdown plays a factor, most Americans will have the same viewpoint, but will be more accepting of the shutdown and its factors. In our interview, we asked a Democrat, a Republican, and an Independent who all answered that it is unfair for the workers and veterans to live without pay during a shutdown. Also, 80% of a survey from New Hope Silbury students also agreed that it is unfair for federal employees to go to work without pay. The ethical conversation of government shutdowns cannot be separated by party. 
There is not a general view that can be used to describe how each party will generally react to the shutdown. Depending on how an individual aligns himself with the current government and their policies will determine their support or opposition to the shutdown. There are a wide range of policies that can change with each election, and as the majority party changes, individuals' views of certain policies may differ from the ones being pushed. The ethical debate about payment of government workers during a shutdown is not a political party issue, but an individual's beliefs on the positive or negative effects of the shutdown. Government shutdowns can have a significant effect on the functionality of the government and thus the economy in America due to the closing of federal agencies. But, according to a poll taken by Hill Harris, it proves that many Americans don't know what happens during the shutdown. In fact, only 31% of registered voters were able to correctly identify that approximately one quarter of the federal government becomes inoperative. The other 69% missed the mark, with 28% saying that half of the government was shut down and 19% going as far as to say three quarters. In the most recent shutdown, many agencies suffered, resulting in a myriad of repercussions. In the agriculture sector, 40% of workers were cut off, resulting in farmers being unable to get loans processed. 13% of Homeland Security workers stopped work, causing companies to be unable to verify some workers' immigration status. National parks weren't able to maintain and protect the parks, which remained open, and vandalism destroyed many natural resources. The justice system suffered a 17% loss in staff, causing federal courts to stop hearing civil cases after January 25th. 34% of transportation workers stayed home, creating delays in some airports. Possibly the biggest hit came to the Commerce Department, with a reported 87% stop in work. Government spending contributes to 18% of economic output, and in just two weeks, gross domestic product dropped by $11 billion due to all of these losses, not counting the impact on businesses who couldn't get federal permits or loans in time. These types of losses support the view that the short-term negative effects on the economy outweigh the long-term positives regarding public policy and the priorities of the president for discretionary spending. How many government shutdowns do you think there have been since the Control Act in 1966? Six. Six. Two. Wow. Well, I'm going to guess. I'm going to say ten. Ten. Throughout U.S. history, there have been a total of 21 government shutdowns and a total of seven presidents who have used it to push public policy. Out of these presidents, four of them were Republicans and three were Democrats. Some presidents used the government shutdowns more frequently. For example, Ronald Reagan used the process eight times. Even though the topics of the shutdowns differ, the basis for all of them came from trying to attain funding for certain programs. Bill Clinton and Obama both had shutdowns that related to Medicare, while both Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan had shutdowns relating to abortion funding. This relation between shutdowns coming from both Democratic and Republican presidents displays evidence that government shutdowns are not a one-party issue. Both parties had various shutdowns lasting only a few hours to multiple weeks over similar policies. To conclude, government shutdowns can be a useful maneuver by the president to push public policy. Done wrong, however, and the president's campaign and public image can be in grave jeopardy. Shutdowns are one of the only topics in politics that has been unscathed from partisan bias. Presidents from both parties have used government shutdowns in the past and have had mixed success and support. Most people in the United States know little about shutdowns, since it is relatively new, and on most facets of government shutdowns people have mixed opinions. The one thing most people can agree on is that it is unfair and unethical to withhold the pay of government workers when they are not the ones making the decisions. The efficiency of government shutdowns is relative to policy implementation and also economic growth. The shutting down of many governmental programs has hurt economic growth, but the policies implemented have been linked to bolster it. Obama's Affordable Care Act showed positive growth on the economy through its progression. There is no telling how a shutdown will be perceived by the public or its effect on the nation, but the seemingly negative connotation that follows a government shutdown is because of its short-term negative effects. However, if the president continues to utilize shutdowns as a method of implementing policy, the long-term effects and the efficiency of the shutdown is dependent on the policies used as well as the way it is implemented. With the way the nation is heading, it appears that government shutdowns will be continued to be used as a way for each party to try to gain control and push their own agendas and policies. Without compromises between the two parties in government, shutdowns are inevitable. Future government representatives and the president should focus more on understanding and working with all to achieve a better nation, one with policies that betters the people instead of one's party. 
the budget proposal should be all-encompassing and beneficial for the nation instead of one party's agenda. This mindset, if applied to all government officials, could effectively eliminate the extended time on shutdowns, ones that last over five days, and instead be used more for short-term shutdowns that focus on perfecting a budget plan that benefits America.